What's up, guys? It's your girl, Jay Bell, uh, from 93.3 The Q, and I have a very special guest in the studio today. Of course, Clue the Play is going to be over at Pope Joy uh, Theater starting tonight, and I have one of the cast members. He plays Professor Plum. That's right. His name is Jonathan Spivey. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, of course, of course. When Devin reached out to me and was like, can you interview? I was like, definitely, especially when I went back and I was looking at Clue, and I was like, I, it came out the year I was born, in yes, 1985. The, the movie's from 85, yeah. and this year is also the 75th anniversary of the board game, if you've ever played the game. Oh, I never got to play the game. Yeah, it's all the same characters, but our stage version of the... Our stage version of Clue is pretty much the movie with some with some adjustments to make it kind of more fit for the stage. But okay. if you know iconic moments or iconic lines from the film, they are all in our stage version. Okay, I was going to ask you that. That was the first question that actually was going to come, come to mind. Um, first of all, asking people have that never seen the movie yeah. or played the game yeah. break down the whole plot of yeah. it. Yeah, and you don't. You don't need to know the movie or the game to have a great time at the show. Okay. Um, It's a classic murder mystery. So Body Manor, it's this old mansion, right? Mm -hmm. And there are six suspects who don't know each other. Right. Who are there. The only thing they have in common is that they're all being bribed. But they don't know each other and they don't know why each individual person is being bribed. But they've been told through a letter, show up to this mansion at 730 on Saturday night and your blackmailer is going to reveal himself, and you are all going to get off the hook for this blackmail. Mm. So the six suspects show up, and then bodies start dropping, and they're trying to figure out who the killer is. Wow. So it becomes this kind of like murder mystery who done it, where uh-huh. we're all running from room to room in the house trying to figure out which one of us has done it. To be clear, like none of these murders are scary. This is not like a terror show. <laughs> This is a silly, vaudevillian, fun, slapstick, pratfall kind of a show. Ah, okay, okay. And I was going to ask you how much does the play correlate with the movie, which you already said. It's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same. I'd say the biggest difference is the movie, if you know it well, the humor in that is very deadpan and very kind of like Mm -hmm. played straight. Right. Our stage version is much broader and much wackier. There's a lot of physical comedy. There's a lot of door slamming. There's a lot of people falling down. There's a lot of chase scenes. It's not a musical, but there's also a lot of incredible, like, underscored music in the show. Oh, nice. So if you know the game, like, you know that there are these classic rooms that also appear in the movie, like the library and the study. Mm -hmm. And one of the great, one of the things that makes the show really fun, too, is that you get to watch all of us as a group, like, one run from one room to another around this haunted house. Right. Trying to figure out which one of us is the killer. Mm. And when I think about Clue now, I, I think about the movie Knives Out. Yeah. Is it, obviously Clue's a little bit funnier, yes. right? Knives Out seems to be a little bit more serious. Yeah. Is there some type of correlation between you? Yeah, you know, the murder mystery genre, the murder mystery thing has been around for so long. Right. Like I think about those Agatha Christie plays too, but even like Dracula, Frankenstein, mm-hmm. this is all descendants of that show. And there's, I think the reason why that kind of story continues to be interesting is is it forces you as an audience member to kind of sit on the edge of your seat and participate because you're trying to figure out who did it. Right. So it forces you, again, like our show is not interactive. We are not talking to the audience. They are not coming up on stage with us. (laughs) That would be fun, though. (laughs) Uh, For some people, (laughs) if you like that kind of theater. Right. But it does it does force it does force the audience to kind of pay attention because you're doing the mental gymnastics of trying to figure out who the guilty party is on stage. So that you layer that with the fact that it is broad and funny and um and also eighty minutes with no intermission. So you're not gonna be at the theater for very long half of your day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You want to get up, you want to watch your play, you want to go on about your business, you know? Yeah, maybe get there 15 minutes early. I think, is there a bar, there's a bar in the lobby? Are there concessions available at the lobby? Concessions are available, yes. Yes, yes, this would not be a bad show to maybe stop at the bar beforehand. If you do drink, if you don't, that's great too. But if you do, Mm -hmm. not a bad show to have one before you get there. Also a great show for, I think they tell us to plug it for kids 12 and up, but my niece uh, just turned 11. She came when we did it in Baltimore. She had an incredible time. Okay. Again, none of the murders in the show are 
Like you said, scary. they're not scary or anything like that? No, they're funny. Okay. And the show is so broad. The humor is so silly that that kids, again, parents can use their, their judgment about their own kids, but kids by and large will have a great time at the show too. Well, I love to hear that. Now, let's get into your character because you play yeah. Professor Plum, yeah. who was also played by the famous Christopher Lloyd, Christopher Lloyd, who also played Doc Brown in Back to the Future. That's right. You know, you got to break down the history yeah. of it. And so how was it taking on this role? And let's also talk about how you made it your own. Yeah. Uh, every actor approaches it differently. So I did not grow up watching the movie. I had seen clips, but... So some actors like really want to dive into that source material because they want to steal bits and pieces from that iconic performance or from other actors that have that have played the role too. I'm I'm not one of those actors. When I when I know I'm going to be doing a role that is based on something iconic or based on a performance that was iconic, I personally kind of avoid mm -hmm. that source material and try to just look at the script as if it's the first time it's ever being done. Mm. Um that being said, like, if you see any of the photos of our production, uh, the the costumes that we're wearing, the way our hair is done, mm -hmm. we basically are dressed like those characters from the film. So from an actor perspective, that's kind of going to do a lot of the work for you. Like, okay. I don't have to make sure that the audiences think I remind them of the character from the movie because I'm wearing exactly what he wore in the movie, basically. Right. So then my job... If I'm not really relying on that source material, it's kind of like it would be for any other play. I'm trying to figure out what the character wants, what the circumstances of the story are, and how they're trying to get with what they want. And, um, yeah, every actor is different, though. That's been my process. Right, um, right. We're, we're trying to pay homage to these performances like uh -huh. Christopher Lloyd in that film is iconic. Right. And I could never be Christopher Lloyd. So I guess I also <laughs> look at my job as like, what character attribute or what kind of what piece of the character can I find that might um, that might make him a comic archetype in our version? So I've really leaned into like the fact that he's a professor. He mm -hmm. thinks he's the smartest person in the room. Right. He's smug. He thinks of himself as a womanizer. So I've kind of leaned into that, and mm -hmm. that that might be one of the differences from the movie. You know, the, like the movie is from '85, like you right, said. Yeah. And, I think Christopher Lloyd plays him as a little bit more of a going after the women in the story. Mm -hmm. I haven't really taken that approach in our okay. version because we are 40 years later and times are different. <laughs> different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I asked that. How did you, you know, take on the role yourself versus what he did in the movie? Yeah. But I can totally understand it. And um, I want to ask you, what is your favorite scene in the whole entire play? Yeah. So I have so many favorites. Um uh, you know, I'd say the end. A lot of folks ask about the end because they know that the movie had multiple endings. Right. So when it when it was released in theaters, there were three endings. Audi you know, remember this was pre-internet, pre-streaming. Audiences didn't know they were seeing three different endings until, until they started talking to each other and realizing, like, wait, you saw a different ending than I saw. Mm -hmm. And then when they released, released it on VHS, they strung the three endings together back to back so that when you were watching the tape, you could see every ending oh wow our show ends the same way every night but if you if you like the fact that that the movie had multiple endings mm -hmm. we still fulfill that expectation you still get that itch scratched and i don't want to spoil any surprises okay but um you do kind of get that multiple ending experience from our stage version so that's that's probably one of my favorite moments because you hear the you hear the audience recognition every night that they're they're seeing what they expected, but in mm -hmm. a different way that they didn't know they were going to get. Ah, so then tell us the secret. Who actually did the murder? I can't tell you. We're trying to get people to come <laughs> see the show. <laughs> Dang it, I was hoping to get the secret, okay? All right, so three reasons why listeners need to go see this play ASAP. Okay, here's my really heady reason. Um, here's my soapbox reason. <laughs> my soapbox reason is because... The pandemic caused most, most of us to only watch and consume entertainment at home through our streaming platforms. Mm -hmm, okay. And there is a, a fulfillment and a an experience that you can get when you're sitting in a room with 2,000 other people watching the same thing that you can never get from sitting in your living room right. watching Hulu. That is true. And that, that can be a really... 
um, healing experience, sitting in a room full of people who are different from you, who have different ideas, who are all watching the same thing and laughing together, Mm -hmm. overcoming differences, focusing on the same experience together, Uh I think is really important right now. Okay. The other two things, I think, okay, top three reasons. Reason number two. (laughs) You trying to uh, figure it all out? (laughs) We need, the, we need two reasons, two short reasons, because you gave the long one. Okay, two short reasons. Uh, number two would be this set is incredible. Okay. We have um, over 20 folks backstage making the set work. It is not automated. There is no machinery. It is people pushing and wow. pulling ropes. And okay. I've, I've compared it to a pop-up book. Like, the set <laughs> is truly beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I'll pat myself and, and our cast on the back. We are, you've got a stage full of like veterans oh, wow. doing precision comedy really well. And we make it look easy, but this type of show should look easy, but it is is very hard to do and requires a lot of skill. And you've got folks at the top of their um, professional game here in town right. bringing it to your backyard. Okay. So that'd be my other long-winded reason to come <laughs> You know what? There's nothing wrong with that. So basically, you need to go do it because there's a lot of hardworking people on this set. They do everything by hand. You got a great cast of veterans that are together. And on top of that, it's a fun murder mystery. We need laughter right now. It's a it's a mental vacation. And I think it's important to remember that that's important and worthy, especially right now. Yes. We need time and experiences that allow us to relax. Yeah. And to distract ourselves from everything that's happening around us. Mm -hmm. And that is a worthwhile and important use of our time right now. Exactly. Well, perfectly said. Jonathan, a.k.a. Professor Plum, (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much for coming by today. Yeah. You guys, make sure you buy your tickets ASAP because you can buy them at the box office, correct, Devin? We can buy them. The play starts tonight and it's through Sunday, November 10th. Uh, You can buy them online also at PopeJoyPresents.com. Again, thank you so much for coming. It's the J. Bill Show.